it just me or are osteoporosis medications really confusing? Hi, this is Christine from Reno Tutorials and today we're going to be diving into the mechanism of action of osteoporosis medications. I for one find this quite confusing and difficult to learn but now we have demystified it and in only a few minutes this know-how can be yours. This is actually a little snippet from one of our live courses but it was just too good not to share. Grab a cuppa and let's jump right in. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through osteoporosis, my little animated take on this, um, just to really break it down into something super simple and manageable. And then so you really understand where all the drugs are acting. I want you to think about bone as a building site, right? So bone is always under construction. And there's always two things happening. There's bone resorption or bone breakdown and bone formation. And these are always coupled and happening together. And if you think about it, that's how things should be constructed. If you go to a building site, they're going to lay the foundations and get the ground right before they pour the cement in. And you're going to knock down the old house before you build the new one, right? So resorption or demolition of the bone is going to be a good thing. It's a healthy thing in order to set the scene for very healthy bone to form on top. So these two things, resorption and formation, are both healthy things. They're both meant to be happening and they work together. So they're both good things. So, of course, when it comes to bone resorption, we have our little osteoclast that comes along and makes little pits in the bone. And the way it does that is it um, produces proteolytic enzymes um, and also secretes hydrochloric acid. So it's going to dissolve that bone down and make these little pits. And then once it's done that, the osteoblast comes along and pours the cement, pours some new bone in there. So perfect. Osteoblast, osteoclast working together. But you can imagine on this building site, right, the osteoclast has the toughest job. Making the pits looks like the hardest job. Rather than pouring the cement, that does look slightly easier. So the osteoclast that's digging the pits is going to get tired. And actually, osteoclasts only last for about 12 days. That's their lifespan. Um, so we have to have a constant supply of new osteoclasts coming onto the building site. And we have this set up. So we have osteoclast precursors that are hanging back in the bone marrow somewhere. So they're just chilling out there in reserve and they're waiting for a signal to know that they need to go and start work on the building site. And the way they receive this signal is through this little receptor on their surface called rank. So when rank is activated, this little precursor cell will differentiate into an osteoclast and will go to the building site to help the osteoclast uh, resorb the bone. Now osteoblasts, they are on this building site, they can see where all the staff are, they know how many osteoclasts are around, they know what they need to get this work done. So if the osteoclasts are low, the osteoblasts will actually produce rank ligand, which will go to the rank receptor and promote differentiation of more osteoclasts. So osteoblasts have osteoclasts on demand, right? They can literally make more of these little guys, which is handy. Now, one other cell that hangs out in bone that I haven't mentioned yet is the osteocyte. So um, the osteocyte has the best job on the building site. They're really overseeing everything and their job is really cruisy. So where I told you that the osteoclast only lasts about 12 days, the osteoblast lasts about 100 days. So their job's easier, but they can't do it forever. You know, it's, it's still hard. So a proportion of these osteoblasts will differentiate into osteocytes and then they'll remain in bone for many, many, many years. And their job is really easy. They're really just controlling things and overseeing the work that's going on. And they can do this in a couple of ways. They too can produce rank ligand, which can go to these precursor cells and cause more osteoclasts to come into the bone marrow. Or they can do one other thing, and that's produce something known as sclerostin. Sclerostin goes to osteoblasts and inhibits their function. So sclerostin inhibits bone formation. So the osteocyte can really orchestrate bone, whatever it wants. It can change the amount of resorption, change the amount of formation. That's what the osteocyte is doing. Now I'm just going to add in some basic physiology to this to see how our hormones and vitamins and minerals um, affect this. 
So the first thing to consider is that the building blocks, the cement that's being laid in the bone is basically just calcium and phosphate. So you need to have enough of these building blocks to make healthy bones. So they have to be nourished, essentially. And remember that vitamin D helps us to absorb these building blocks from our diet. And PTH activates vitamin D so that it can do that. So you can see how PTH, vitamin D help us to absorb these building blocks to make healthy bone. But also PTH and calcitriol, so activated vitamin D, they can also break down bone when they need to, because remember this hormone axis is there to protect us from low calcium. If there's lo a low calcium situation, we want to avoid that. The, the parathyroid gland will produce PTH. It will go make more calcitriol and together these hormones go to the bone and they will take the calcium they need. So what they're going to do is they're going to promote rank ligand production and they're going to make more osteoclasts. And that means that these little osteoclasts will go to the bone, take out that calcium and help them to put it back into the bloodstream. So that's just part of our homeostasis. And that is also a very healthy process in small amounts. But the other thing PTH can do when there's sort of enough of it around and when the goal is not necessarily to fix the calcium, PTH can at certain doses inhibit sclerostin and this can promote bone formation. So PTH can take minerals out of the bone, it can also build bone back up. And estrogen inhibits osteoclast. So now we're going to layer on the drugs. <laughs> so first of all, bisphosphonates. These are toxic to osteoclasts. So what bisphosphonates do is they go into bone and they stick to the surface of the bone. They become incorporated into the bone. And so when the osteoclast comes along and it digs up a little bit of bone, it's going to get exposed to those chemicals and they're toxic to the osteoclast and the osteoclast dies. So bisphosphonates cause osteoclast toxicity and death. Donozumab, we mentioned before, is a monoclonal antibody directed against rank ligand. So it's literally going to block rank ligand binding to the rank receptor. So we're going to make less osteoclasts. And lastly, estrogen and the selective estrogen modulators such as raloxifene are just going to do what estrogen does and they are going to inhibit osteoclasts. So that's the anti-resorptives working on the osteoclast. We have another group of drugs called the anabolics or the bone builders. <laughs> and these are teriparatide and romosozumab. Teriparatide is literally just a PTH analog. So it's just like giving PTH, whereas romosozumab is an anti-sclerostin antibody. So it's gonna um, block this and then promote bone formation. So that was osteoporosis medications in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope to see you again soon for some more higher learning. Bye.